Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Um, today is Sunday, Sunday fun day. So as usual, I will do um lecture uh, due to class, uh, I do for all because it's about the same subject. Okay, I do for uh, student conventional mode, okay, uh, which is on Monday until Thursday. And then I will do for modular mode, okay, for Saturday and Sunday. And so do I will do for the Fajah Hidayah student, okay, <laughs> the same, right, conventional mode, right, from Monday to Thursday, okay. So um, basically, uh, this is topic three, okay. Topic three, we will um, touch on the part of uh, what we call as uh, international trade and investment theory. I hope uh, everybody clear my voice, okay, because I I use my um, my mic. I think that this uh, pers uh like personal mic like this is much better the audio compared to used uh, from the webcam mic because uh, webcam mic uh, mostly there will uh, record it all what surrounded us uh, so that will be a problem for me when i listen back to my lecture to you all uh, i do have some some part of still lacking yet so i hope that i can still uh, improve it and then i'm so sorry if let's say some video maybe have some technical problem like lagging yeah because my degree student is complaining about it uh, because that is internet from IIC. Uh -huh. So, yeah, what to do? Because there is lots of lecturer also doing some lecturing, okay? And we are sharing usage of the internet. And of course, we have to be tolerated somehow about that, right? I hope that if anything, maybe we can just shoot the question and raise up okay and raise up any uh, problem regarding on maybe some lecture is not so smooth as been expected okay so all right so today uh, this is topic three as i mentioned just now it's about international trade and investment theory and as you can see from here um, there is a few of topic objective i expect that this topic can be if in a class i can do it in in a week meaning to say twice but uh inshallah i try my best to do uh, meaning to say within the time okay because it's just a only short topic okay uh, in this topic we will learn about more on the concept of um we have traditional theory okay classical theory classical trade theory versus modern firm based theory and then we will learn some about the another uh, internalization theory, okay? And totally this topic is about theory, all right? Okay, so what is in the topic outline? Okay, after studying this topic, the student should be able to, number one, understand the motivation for international trade. And then the second one, we summarize and discuss the differences um, among the classical country-based theory of the international trade. And then the third one, use the modern firm-based uh, theories of the international trade to describe the global strategy adopted by the business. And the fourth one will describe and categorize the different form of the international investment. That is, I told you just now, it's about internalizational theory and also foreign direct investment. And the last one, we have summarized how supply, demand, and political factor influence the foreign direct investment. Okay, assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I hope that everybody today in a very safety and a good health condition. Okay, because uh, I'm quite worried uh, for those Indonesian students in Malaysia nowadays, the cases is keep increasing, uh, but it's still controllable. But um, yeah, yeah, I think that maybe people still have like, um, can I say low civic uh, in terms of maybe like social distancing, quarantine themselves when they are going back from maybe overseas, uh, they have to quarantine themselves. Uh, so that is um, some of the 
controllable and measurement action being taken by the government towards us, right? Okay, um, all right. So moving on to the next slide. Okay, uh, 3.1, international trade and international trade and the world economy. Okay, so according to the 3.1 here, uh, what is trade? Okay, when we're talking about the rate, um, trade, eh? when we're talking about trade, trade is something like the process of transaction, okay, in terms of if you realize a uh, long time ago, the trading is already occurred and exists. When I give you, for example, chicken and you give me back fish, or maybe I give you gold, you give me like um, buffalo, or maybe I give you, for example, coffee, you give me tea. So this is kind of the trade. Okay, means like that one is battery system because before this, um, we don't have some of the uh, transaction to give some that we call as like uh, paper money, okay, or maybe coins, okay, in order to have this transaction. And the era is uh, have some revolutions, okay, from one era to one era when people start with the battery system and then people will move to by giving something like uh, silver and gold and then until today that you can realize that we use half paper notes okay we have that paper money and then we have like coins in order to do the transaction when we, we buy and selling okay so that is a simple um, introduction to make you to know what is trading or trade okay so trade is a uh, according to the tax, huh? voluntary exchange of the goods, uh, services, asset or money between one person or organization and another. So meaning to say, when there is the word voluntary, meaning to say that we're willing to exchange okay, the goods, willing to have some the transaction, either the goods itself or the products. Like I mentioned just now, it's about like chicken, uh, we have meat, buffalo, we have like the and coffee yeah that one is the good we can see it and somehow maybe it can be like services okay maybe you change in terms of the services okay i do bring you using my boat okay to one of the place and then in return maybe you should give me for example like rice uh, for example uh, and asset okay asset is some part of your belongings or money yeah we're talking about money right now right uh, we're talking about the the pepper the pup the pepper the pepper notes okay and also the coins between one person it can be you and me it can be between you and friends uh and also from one organization maybe from IIC to the another colleges or maybe from IIC to the another university and also so it's vice versa okay and this transaction it should be altered by the two party and of course it should be have some response okay if let's say one party is only doing this thing and the other party is just uh, silent uh, so the trading is couldn't occur okay because we're talking about voluntary exchange okay kita menyatakan tentang uh, secara sukarelanya untuk kita bertukar dari segi barangan uh, perkhidmatan aset okay harta benda ataupun duit ataupun wang ringgit di antara satu orang dengan orang yang lain dan juga Satu orang dengan organisasi ataupun organisasi yang lain. Okay. Then when we're talking about international trade, definitions between the trade between residents of the two countries. So meaning to say when we're talking about international trade, we're talking about two countries is involved in this transaction. Ada berlakunya dua negara yang uh, melakukan perdagangan. Okay. Lebih daripada satu negara lah. Okay, for example, like Malaysia export proton to UK and maybe Malaysia import uh, vegetables, okay, chilies from Indonesia. Okay, so this is the trading, okay, international trading. All right, so we're moving on to the another. Okay, so this is the thing that I told you before this, okay. We're talking about... um. Yeah, in this topic is very simple. Okay, I want you to make you to say that topic three la is like peanut butter because why we're talking about only just classical country theory and then also modern firm based theory. That's it. Okay. 
So particularly uh, what you have to know under classical country theory, we have merchantilism, absolute advantage, cooperative advantage, cooperative advantage with money and relative factor the endowment. So I want you to gather with me, we have number one, merchantilism. Number two, we have absolute advantage. Number three, we have cooperative advantage. And number four, we have cooperative advantage with money. And the last one, we have relative factor endowments. Okay, so this is the five and the types of the classical country theory. And if you realize who those who have um, already download, uh, downloaded the notes, topic three, right? Okay, some of that, uh, they mentioning about uh, what we call cooperative advantage but they not mention specifically cooperative advantage with money so actually these two is differ so I want you to um, separate it uh, say not you basically dia uh, jadi ada lima it's not four okay it's there will have five types under classical country theories okay so we're moving on to the next one, okay, what is merchantilism? Okay, so merchantilism is the country wealth is measured by its holding of the gold and silver. So um, it's meaning to hear, it's meaning to say, uh, kekayaan sebuah negara itu ditentukan, diukur berdasarkan, berdasarkan, berdasarkan emas ataupun uh, kita kata perak yang dimiliki oleh negara tersebut. Okay, so meaning to say when we're talking about the country wealth, okay, is relying on how much you have the gold and silver, okay. And the second one is stated here, a country goal should be to enlarge holding of the gold and silver by promoting export, okay. Uh, they say in here, according to the merchantilism theory, mostly the country goal is only to just promoting export. But in other way around, it discouraging import. Okay, can you imagine that? We want to do have, we want to have international trade, but we only promoting export. We just selling, but we don't want to buy. So in other way around, this is kind like you are only doing your your own uh, country business, but in other way around, you don't want to support the other business from other country. So this is um. Because they just want to enlarge the gold and silver. Uh, dia punya gold adalah, dia punya, kita kata, uh, apakah dia punya gold, target. The target is only just to have, to enlarge, untuk me menyatakan supaya emas dan perak yang dimiliki oleh sesebuah negara tersebut perlu banyak. Untuk melahirkan banyak tu, mereka perlu menjual lebih banyak. Promoting export, but they don't want to import because import meaning that you are buying. So when you are buying, you are spending. When you are spending, in terms of the gold and silver will be reduced. Ah, faham? Konsepnya apabila dia berbelanja, dia sudah, sudah menghabiskan emas dan juga perak di negaranya. Okay, and what is new merchantilism or protectionist? Okay, for those who have downloaded on the long notes, and for those who have the books, okay, you can refer, okay, from your manual. Okay, uh, neo merchantilist or protectionist, okay, during 1920s, he said about Adam Smith's time, okay, this guy is actually stated in his theory that uh, during this time, there is neo merchantilist or protectionist who actually anti on this merchantilism, okay. So during this time, this protectionist, uh, they might be stated that uh, during this time only the the richer will go for riches and the poorest will go for the poorest is some kind of like um we can say like capitalism okay and if you realize in here under the new merchantilist mostly they are come from those the lower labor manual labor which is come from the american federations of the labor congress of industrial organizational meaning to say they are working in industry they are working in the factory line and then they have textile manufacturer, steel companies, sugar grower and also peanut farmer. 
So those, this guy, okay, can I say that this guy, yeah, these people, okay, they are under the group of people under neo merchantalists neo merchantalists meaning they, they are protecting their rights, okay, because during this time, we can say that the high level, top level is just come from the riches, okay, and those, these poorest is come from all this from neo merchantalists so, they are protect their rights. So this has been stated by Adam Smith. You can read further in my long notes. Huh? Alright, and then they also stated in here, okay, what is a disadvantage of merchantalists? Okay, if you realize from here, there is a disadvantage of merchantalism. Okay, number one, because uh, as I mentioned before, right, uh, they are confused the acquisition of the treasure with the acquisition of wealth. Why? Because in terms of the, the treasure itself, whether we have in terms of our own, our own asset, our own belongings, rather than to have in terms of the wealth itself. So your treasure and wealth might be confused. You cannot determine the wealthy of your country, whether it is inherited from your generation before, or maybe you are come from the wealthy that you have actually enlarging in terms of your promoting your export and also discouraging import. Ha, jadi confuse kat sini adalah mengalami kekeliruan sama ada kekayaan sebuah negara tu bersandarkan segala treasure. Treasure ni adalah simpanan ataupun yang pernah dimiliki daripada generasi sebelum ni. Okey harta benda ni atau berdasarkan kekayaan yang memang mereka dapat hasil daripada emas dan perak yang dimiliki. And bear in mind student how they can get okay in term of uh, their gold and silver. If you realize I just stated this one uh, during for those who are uh, like the movie like King Arthur times and King Uther's time okay and I like to watch Merlin stories okay so uh, during this Arthur's time actually is picturing this merchantilism time during Roman's time okay and during this time okay uh, those people when they want to enlarge their gold and silver they have to go and maybe do some war and when they get this war, they can get some maybe like facil not facilities, something like they have weapon because they want to actually buy certain weapons. Okay, they need gold and silver. So for those in order to protect their army, okay, their armor, for example, right? So they have to make sure that they have that uh gold and silver. So of course they can be like robbed and do some during the war and then after they get that kind of asset they can buy the the weapons for their army. There are more, huh? All right. So uh the second one weaken the country because it robbed individuals of the ability to trade freely. So it stated in here it weaken the country. Ah, uh, dia melemahkan negara tersebut because you are not giving the rights and uh to have some opportunity to buy from other country. You only can sell, even you maybe like, maybe you prefer other country's product, okay? You are not allowed to do that because you have to sell the product that within your country. Because it said here, number one, it robs the individual to trade freely. It's discouraged import, right? Uh, you remember the cakap kat sebelum tadi, Adalah dia menghalang supaya berlakunya import. Import, what is import? You are you are buying. So you're not allowed to buy but you are encouraged to, to sell. So how does in an economy system, it can be happen transaction of trading. Perdagangan tu tidak boleh berlaku jika bertepuk sebelah tangan. You allow only to have selling but you not allow people to buy. Ah, okay, and then to benefit from the voluntary exchange. So during the merchantilism time, they not allowed okay any the the kinds of benefit to voluntary exchange because they only encouraging on exporting. Ah, saya banyak kali mention benda ni because I want you to make you clear what is merchantilism theory about, and the the next one, it forces the countries to to produce the product. Okay, to produce the product, it would otherwise not in order to minimize the, the import. So, dia kata dia memaksa 
negara tersebut untuk produce produk. Okey, untuk mengeluarkan produk. Kalau tidak, ia akan meminimalkan in order to minimize the import. Okay. Walaupun sepatutnya kita boleh beli dari negara lain. We can buy, we can trading with imports. We can buy from other country but in order to minimize. Okay. For those people, okay, the society to buy from other country, we have to be falsely produce the product. This is happened in China. This is happened in Japan. Because they only just based on the ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism meaning to say you are only supporting your local product. It's good. For the GDP, it's very good. Okay. However, in terms of the voluntary exchange can, can't be happen. The trading can't be happen. Okay. Because why? Because what I'm trying to say in here, when we actually buying from other country, we know something that what is the lacking part of our product, our local product. So we can improvise, right? Uh, so when we see example like uh, we are buying Japanese product, we can see they are very popular with something like uh, the things product that make people life easier, example, right? Uh, like innovation product. When we see, oh, it can be like this, right? Okay, why not we follow? Uh, so it's a good in other way around, but other country, they, they have to ask, maybe they can do it, but they force. The country, even though it's very not quality, but they have forced the country to produce the product itself. Okay, yeah, it depends on how the policy of the country itself. All right, now we're moving to the second one, absolute advantage. Okay, what is absolute advantage? Okay, absolute advantage, export those goods and services for which a country is more productive than other country okay so i want you to i think that you already learned this subject in uh, i do not know whether it's principle of economy or macro or micro economy but there you had learned before okay so they said in here uh, according to absolute advantage they will export those goods and services for which a country is more productive than other country if the country is more better more productive than other country the country will be export that product. But in another way around, if, okay, import those goods and services for which other country are more productive than that. If you see that another country is better in producing that product, so we should import. Okay? Okay, I give example according to this table. Okay, we have wine. Okay, we have clock radio. This is example. Huh? So I, I want you to like, Okay, sorry, yeah, I got text from my student here. Okay, uh, if you realize, okay, if you realize, okay, um, Okay, okay. If you realize, um, yeah, and this table, the theory of the absolute advantage, uh, in one hour, I'll put per labor of labor, I'll put per hour of labor from France. They can produce two bottles of wine. Do you see? Okay, the screen sharing with you all. Okay, two bottles of wine compared to the Japanese label. Because Japanese label only can produce the one, one bottle in one hour. But France label able to produce two bottles in one hour. So which country have absolute advantage in producing wine? Okay, the answer is France. Ah, okay, France. Because two versus one. So France label, okay, they have produced two bottles of wine in one hour. Compared to Japan, they only have to produce only one bottle in one hour. So, France has absolute advantage in producing wine. While you can see in the clock radio, okay, one hour of labor from France able to produce three units of the clock radio compared to Japanese labor able to produce five units of the clock radio in one hour. So, in another way around, Japanese 
has absolute advantage in producing clock radio compared to France, right? So, where is export, where is import? It depends on how you structured your, your understanding, okay? For me, France will export wine and France will be import clock radio. Ah, clear? Okay, for Japan, Japan will export clock radio and will import wine from France. So this is how you make the understanding. For those who understand, you repeat my video many times to ensure that you understand this table. I don't want you to memorize because when you memorize, somehow, let's say I change the number here and then you totally will shock. Okay? So remember how you need, how many units and then which one is country having more. So that one is they have absolute advantage. Which country have less, so they have to import. When the country have more, so they will be export. Alright? Clear? Okay, according to absolute advantage flaws, what happened to the trade if one country has absolute advantage in both products? Let's see, okay? We change this table. Maybe wine for France have two and clock radio for France is six. So they are conquering both products. So in the theory of the absolute advantage, the answer is no trade would occur. Why? Because only according to absolute advantage, one country, one product. They cannot one country, two product. Okay? So no trade will occur because they conquer both. Okay, in the kind of absolute advantage, there must be another country. They have the productive more than another country. Clear, student? Okay, I hope it's clear. Okay, now we're moving on to the next, okay? Alright. Yeah, actually I already explained to you all just now, okay. Alright, they say in here, in France, one hour of labor can produce either two bottles of wine or three clock radios, okay. In Japan, one hour of labor can produce either one bottle of wine or five clock radio. The same thing I explained to you all. The France has absolute advantage in production of wine and one hour of labor produce two bottles in France but only one in Japan. So Japan has absolute advantage in the production of the clock radio. If Japan and France are able to trade with each other, both will be better off because it's each of the country, they have their absolute advantage for their own products. Okay. All right. So we're moving on to the next one. Okay. The second one is cooperative advantage. Okay. What is cooperative advantage? Okay. Produce and export those goods and services for which it relatively more productive than other countries. Okay. So they will also import those goods and services for which other countries that uh, import those goods and services for which other country are relative more productive than it is. Okay, the same thing like absolute advantage, but in here it said which it relatively more productive. Okay, we see after this, what is more relatively? Okay, so differences between the cooperative and absolute advantage. Okay, absolute versus relative productive differences. Because just now, absolute advantage using more productive. But in here, they said more relatively. Okay, uh, that one, they have the differences. And then cooperative advantage incorporates the concept of opportunity cost. What's mean the opportunity cost? The cost that you have foregone. Let's say I have one dollar, uh, sorry, ten dollar. I choose to buy tea compared to buy coffee. So my opportunity cost is coffee. Are you get me? Because I choose tea. Let's say I have ten dollar, I choose coffee. So my opportunity cost is tea. Okay. Cost yang terpaksa dilepaskan. Itu maksud opportunity cost. Because 10 ringgit cannot be buy both. Let's see example lah. Tak boleh beli tea, tak boleh beli coffee. So we have to choose one. Alright. And then for the cooperative advantage, they said uh, the 
concept of the opportunity cost just now, the value what is given up, okay, the cost that you have to foregone in order to get the good, all right? So we're moving on to the next, okay, what is the example? Okay, what is dia punya uh, uh, contoh dan juga dia punya kita kata um, apa ya? Eh? Explain lah macam mana kita nak menerangkan. Okay, alright. So the first one, the theory of the cooperative advantage. Okay, can you see it clearly? Okay, this table, as I mentioned before, we have for the output for label in France. Okay. Label di negara France, okay. For one, they produce four in the clock radio is six. In the concept of absolute advantage, okay, read my list and hear it clearly. In absolute advantage, no trade occurred because according to absolute advantage, there must be one country, one product. But in this case, if you realize, France is dominantly, okay, dominantly conquering both products. Wine, four units. Clock radio, six units. While for Japan, is one units for wine, one bottle of wine, and then five units for clock radio. I told you before, right? Based absolute advantage, no trade will occur, but in the cooperative advantage, the trade still can be made among the country. Okay, how it can be made? Okay, if you realize this in India, France, okay, I just, at the same time, you see the notes and then how I explain it, all right? For in the France, okay, France is four times better than the wine production, okay? Four, one here, right? So, four times better. But for the clock, how is go four times better? Because four divided by one, so it's four times, okay? And for the clock radio, it's just six divided by five, it's 1.2. So, which one is better, wine or clock radio? Of course, it's wine, right? In the part of the France because it's four times better compared like clock radio. It's only 1.2 better. 1.2 times better than Japan. So, in here, let's say France choose to produce the wine. So, what is the opportunity cost? The opportunity cost for France is the clock radio. Are you getting me how? Madam, macam mana itu boleh jadi opportunity cost untuk France itu clock radio jika uh, France itu memilih untuk mengeluarkan wine maka untuk clock radio dia terpaksa lepaskan. Uh, dalam konsep ini masih sama seperti absolute advantage. One country, one product. You cannot produce both products. Are you get me? You kena pilih satu sahaja. Jadi satu produk yang dipilih tadi adalah to produce wine. So in another way around to produce the clock radio will be another country. So France choose to produce wine tadi because four times better. So kalau you tengok dekat sini, in this theory France should export wine to Japan and Japan should export clock radio to France. Okay, sebab apa tadi? Because Japan lah yang akan dapat opportunity cost. Okay. Uh, untuk produk yang wine tak nak tadi Iaitu clock radio Okay, wine tak nak tadi Yang France tak nak tadi ha? Bukan wine tapi France Yang tidak mahu clock radio Tapi dia mahu choose wine Okay, because it's four times better Okay, so they say here One bottle of wine will sell for 1.56 Divide by four clock radio in France And five clock radio Five divide by one in Japan so, let's say in Japan, they trade two clock radio equals to one bottle of wine. Okay, ini salah satu keadaan, situasi dia letakkan jika dalam keadaan Japan mahu trading. Dua unit clock radio equals to one bottle of wine. Okay, but in this case right now, if let's say Japan want to do their own wine, okay, because I told you before, right, one bottle of wine we sell for six divide by 4. Why 6 divide by 4? Because in here, let's say France want to do their own. And so do for the clock radio, if Japan want to do their own, they have to 5 divide by 1. In order to get one bottle of wine, they have to foregone 5 units of clock radio. And for the France, if they want to get the one, one clock radio, they have to foregone 1.5 for the wine. So it's like not rational. Okay, because in the situation in here they said, let's say Japan want to trade two clock radio, two solid clock radio equals to one bottle of wine. 
So France can get two clock radio if they sell one bottle wine of wine. But if without trade, they just only can get 1.5 clock radio in to increase the production. Faham ke tak? Saya rasa you tak faham. You will get confused. Okay, dia kata jika France, okay, mereka, they want to produce their own. Dia tak nak trading dengan Japan. So in order to get one bottle of wine saja untuk dapatkan satu botol wine, dia perlu dapatkan 1.5 clock radio. You can imagine one solid clock radio and then the second one will only get half. Clock radio tak boleh half kan? Ha, tapi kalau dengan trading dekat atas ni tadi dia cakap you will get two clock radio solid and then in order to get one bottle of wine. Are you get me? So that is France. Akan dapatlah. Dia akan dapat two, bot two unit clock radio in order to trade with one bottle of wine. But if let's say in another way around, let's say Japan, they don't want also to trading. They want to do their own. So they have to foregone five clock radio in order to get one bottle of wine. So it quite loose in here. Nak dapat satu bottle, dia terpaksa hilangkan lima unit clock radio. Tapi jika dia buat trading, dia hanya perlu two trade, two clock radio sahaja. Ha, tadi lima kan kalau dia buat sini. Tapi kalau dia trading dengan France, in order to get one bottle of wine, you just give me two. Ha, dia cakap you bagi saja saya dua, bot, uh, dua unit clock radio dan you akan dapat satu bottle of wine. Are you get me? Ha, so which one is better? With trading or without trading? Of course the answer is with trading. Without trading, banyak men merugikan. Merugikanlah sebab dia terpaksa foregone yang terlalu banyak. Ah, Tapi with trading, of course, they can actually just to get one bottle of wine, just trading with two clock radio. Alright. Clear, student? Okay, you just repeat again. If you're not clear with that, I will be explained again. Ah. Alright. So, the third one, we have the cooperative advantage with money. I think this is not, not third. This is fourth. Huh? Okay, cooperative advantage with money is very simple. Okay, they say in here, you see which actually costs that have cheaper costs. Okay, when we're talking about cheaper costs, okay, let's say the theory of cooperative advantage with money. Example, we have the wine and also clock radio. We have French made versus Japanese made. Okay. Cost of good in France meaning to say the cost is being made in France. Okay. Whereby for the cost of goods in Japan, the products be made in Japan. Okay. If you realize from here, they have two products. We have wine and also clock radio. Okay. If you realize from the note stated here. Okay. Wine equals to Japanese made. Okay. Is equal to Euro 8 and then Yen 1000. And for the clock radio, okay, Japanese made is 1.6. Okay, Japanese made it 1.6 and yen for 2000. Okay, when it made in Japanese made. Okay, so in here stated, one is better off specializing in what one does relatively best. And they will produce and export those goods and services one is relatively best able to produce. And they will buy other goods and services from people who are better at producing them. So if you realize from this table, okay, compare, uh, if you compare, okay, I want you to make some uh, correction there. Okay, for the cost of good in France, for French made, for the clock radio, is actually Euro 2, not Euro 3. Uh, okay, because it will be like same price with the French made. Euro 2 uh, below that. Okay, for the clock radio for... Cost of good in France, French made is Euro 2 and then for Japanese made is Euro 1.6. Okay, so in here, in the cooperative advantage with money, okay, I'm moving to the next slide. Maybe you can have more to understand. Okay, when we're talking about, let's say in France, the buyer want to buy clock radio if France made is equals to Euro 2. However, Japanese made is Euro 1.6. So, they have should buy from Japan. 
Okay, because why in France they should buy from Japan? Because Japan is only Euro 1.6. Okay, and then so they say in here, so they should buy from Japan because it's cheaper than the French made. Okay, but let's say in the case of in Japan, okay, the buyer want to buy wine. Okay, the buyer want to buy wine. The cost in Japan, they have to pay yen 1,000. Okay, you realize? Yen 1,000. However, France made is only yen 375. So, the better Japanese is buy from French. Are you get me? Okay. So, in here, if the country is offering at the low cost, you have to buy from that country. So, the country will do. Okay. Uh, of course, the country, society, example, if let's say in France, they will buy the product that are more cheaper. Like in the case on the clock radio just now, let's say they have, for French made is a Euro 2. And then Japanese made is Euro 1.6, okay? And then of course, Euro 2 compared to Euro 1.6, 1.6 is much better. Much better, it means that more lower cost, which is Japanese made. Compared, like in the case of the cost of good in Japan, okay, you see the wine. Japanese made is one yen, one thousand yen. Compared to French made is only yen three hundred and seventy five. So of course, even though you living in Japan, cost of good in Japan, but when French made is much more cheaper, of course you buy the French made. Are you get me? So, of course, you just put competitive advantage with money as the case when you are buying the product. Of course, some of you may be preferred expensive product because for you, you are want to say that, okay, expensive product, more quality product. But in, this, in the case of that, this is in the case that we are preferred more on cheaper product. All right. And then we're moving on to the next one. Relative factor endowments, okay, we have a action all in theory, okay, what determines the product for which a country will have cooperative advantage, okay, what is this, okay, factor endowment are vary among the countries, vary in here means different from one country to country, and the goods differ according to the types of factor they are used to produce them. Okay, so when we're talking about the action all in theory, it's talking about how does the goods is differ according to the types of factors that are used to produce them. And then, according to Heckscher Olin theory also, a country will have cooperative advantage in producing products that intensively use resources, factor of production it has in abundance. Meaning to say dalam satu negara tu, mereka mempunyai produk tu dalam bentuk pukal. Dalam kuantiti yang banyak. Okay, so we have China. We have labor, okay, and then Saudi Arabia, we have the crude plantation of oil. Okay, and then for the Argentina, we have the... Okay, and we have the Argentina, okay, Argentina, we have the, the production of the wheat. Wheat ke wheat ke, huh? okay. So China, they are popular in terms of the production in terms of their low labor, uh, low cost of labor. Low cost of labor. Maknanya mereka mempunyai uh, kita kata cost uh, buruh yang sangat rendah. Okay. And compared to in Saudi Arabia, okay, Saudi Arabia, they are very popular in terms of their uh, what we call uh, crude plantation oil. Mereka mempunyai pelantar minyak, mereka mempunyai hasil minyak yang banyak. Okay, that's why they can export oil. Like China, in term of their Chinese labor is very, is consider reasonable price. I cannot say it's cheap. Compared like in ASEAN country, we have like Indonesian labor, we have like Bangladesh, we have Thailand, we have Nepal, Myanmar. Okay, actually they are more cheaper compared to the Chinese labor. Okay, and for the Argentina, they are popular. They are popular with the wheat. Okay, wheat ni kalau you tak faham gandum. Yeah, they make some roti bread. Okay, they make biscuits. Some say they the wheat also we can use to make like cakes, everything. Okay, you can make like your cocoa crunch. You can make your 
uh, nestum, what else? You can make your uh, cornflakes, okay? Your breakfast uh, cereal every morning, right? Uh, so that is actually you can use to make from wheat, okay? So that is popular in Argentina, all right? Okay, so uh, that is thing, the five, okay, classical theory that you have to know, okay? We have materialism, we have absolute advantage, and then we have cooperative advantage, we have cooperative advantage with money, and the last one, we do have the relative factor endowment, which is referred to Heckscher or Lin theory, okay? I hope it's okay until now. All right, student? Clear? Okay. All right. I will stop here, okay, because I will continue the next episode, next episode, the next part for the modern firm-based theory. Okay? Okay, for now, take a break and have a kick cat, okay, and thank you. Okay, after this, I will be right back. Okay, because I want to make my part. All right, digest this first. Okay, thank you. Bye.